Hello guys. In the previous video tutorial, we learned about the basic authentication in REST Assured. And now, it's time to learn about the BRR token authentication in REST Assured. So let's get started. In the former tutorial, when we introduced the BRR token authentication, we had done two actions. The first one was to generate a token. We had used the API account v1 generate token to generate a token for us. We had passed the username and password which generated a token for us. And this particular token was later on used to assign a book to the user. We have the next action that is assigning a book to the user. For this particular action, we had used a bearer token authentication in which we passed the token that was previously generated for us. Along with that, we had passed a request body. This request body consisted of the user ID for which the book needs to be added to along with the ISBN of the respective book. And these all were sent to the server. The server responded with a response of the ISBN for the book which got added to the user account. We are going to replicate the same in the rest assured. So let us try them step by step. We are in the authentication class. We had previously used this class to create the basic authentication test. Now, we are going to attempt the BRR token authentication test. While we are writing the BRR token authentication test, some of the elements which we used in our basic authentication test, such as the base URI, the request and other such things are going to remain common. So, to avoid duplicacy of efforts, we are going to copy them from this particular test itself. So, let us copy the base URI and request since these elements are definitely the ones that we will be needing for composing our BRR token authentication test. Now that we have the base URI and request ready, we need to look for the request body that we need to send along. When we were using the generate token API, we had sent the username and password as the request body to the server and then our token got generated. Hence, as a first step, we need to copy this particular username and password request body and send it as a request to generate a token for us. Now that we have the payload with us, we need to tell the server that the payload needs to be interpreted in a JSON format. Previously, we had written the code for it when we had specified the content type as application JSON. So we can quickly copy the same and use it in our test we are composing. There we have it. The next step will be to send the request to the server. So let us start composing the request. We have the body method in which we will be passing the payload that we want to send to the server. In our case, the payload is the username and password. So those are the ones we will be sending to the server and the method is a post method because we are making a post request. In the post request we need to send the URI which is a parameter. The URI in our case was account v1 generate token to generate a token. So let us copy that. Thus, after sending this particular POST request to the server, a token will get generated for us. And this token needs to be extracted out of the response. So let us firstly extract the response from the server and then we will extract out the token. There we have it, the response object has been created. This is the first step of our BRR token authentication test where we have composed the request using the username and password and passing it to the generate token API. Let me modify the name of the response object we have created to response from generate token. That's much better since we are writing the test it will be simpler for us to understand what we are doing. The next step will be to confirm if the test that we have composed so far is alright and it also generates a token for us or not. Hence, 
we will just print out the response in a pretty print format. So let us use the response object and invoke the pretty print method on it. Next we save the test and run as a JUnit test. The test got executed for us and it generated a token along with the rest of the values. These are the same that we observed in our Postman tool as well. Hence, we can see that we are on the right track. Now the next point comes where we have to extract out this token from the response body we have got. So let us start with that activity. To help us extract out the token from the response body, we have added in our pom.xml a dependency which is JSON path. The JSON path helps us to extract out the node value for any of the nodes that are present in the response body. In our case, we are interested to extract out the token and hence we are going to use the JSON path dependency. Hence, let us move back to the authentication class and start writing code to extract out the token. The response that we are receiving is in a JSON format. We need to firstly convert it into a string format. So that will be our first step before we extract out the token. This getBody method will help us to extract out the response we are receiving from the generate token API and then we are converting it into a string format using a string method. Thus, the string representation of the response body is available to us in the variable called JSON string. The next step towards it will be to use the JSON path library that we have added as a dependency and extract out the token from there. Thus, we use JSON path. We call upon the from method in which we pass the string from which we want to extract out the body. In our case, response from generate token has been stored in JSON string. Hence, we will be using that. The next one, we need to specify the node for which we are interested in to extract out the value. As we are interested in the token, hence we will be using that particular value. Basically, what we have done in this particular line of code is that we have used the JSON path class in which we have used the from method into which we pass the JSON string which is a parameter for the from method. It will help us to extract out the token that is a part of this particular JSON string and then we will be storing it in a string variable. Thus. My variable token generated contains the token value that will be extracted out from the response from the generate token API. Once we have the token in place, we need to send the token in the header value. In the Postman test, what we had done was we had specified the header name as authorization and then we had passed the value as bearer followed by the token value we had received. This is the same step we are trying in our rest assured code. The token generated represents the token that we are getting from the generate token API. This is the one we will be passing in the request headers. So let us start composing the request headers. In the header name we specify authorization while the header value for us will be the phrase bearer followed by the generated token or token generated variable we have over here. The next step we need to specify the header is that the way in which the request body we are sending needs to be interpreted as. As our request body is a JSON body, hence we will use content type application JSON. Now that we have the headers in place, it's time to compose the request body for us. 
the request body which we used was basically the user id followed by the isbn for which we want to assign the book to the user and hence we can use the same one so we quickly copy from the postman tool because we already know the request body and we will now use it in our post request thus we have the add books details over here available to us now that everything is in place we can start composing our request with the request body along with the method that is post method in this case since we are trying to assign a book using the bearer token the request body for us will be the add book details these are the book details we want to add to the user account and now the post method to assign a book to the user in the uri part we will be mentioning the uri to which we want to send the request to it is bookstore v1 books because we are sending it to this particular uri location on the server now that our request has been composed let us capture the response in a response object there we have it the add books response will contain the response we are receiving from the server for the book details we are sending to the server our next step will be to write assertions and as well as write down the response we are receiving from the server so let us start by asserting the response status code in the expected value it will be 201 because when we are assigning a book to the user we are basically creating a book in the user account and hence it is a 201 as the expected value while the actual value will be the status code we are receiving for the add books response object hence we use the get status code method now that the assertion is in place we will write down the response body that we are getting from the server let's reuse the add books response object and call upon the pretty print method everything looks in place let us save the test and then run the bearer token authentication test as a j unit test well the bearer token authentication test has passed and we have received the output in the console on maximizing it we see that the token was generated which was later on used to send a request to the server to add a book to the user account and the isbn value that you see over here is the book that got added to the user account hence we can comfortably say that the bearer token authentication has passed for us and we have been able to send a request to the server using the bearer token authentication